Hello again, everyone. Uh, today is the eighth day of May 2020. A very special day, by the way, because our grandma, Professor Mrs. Folusha Okebukola, is a year older today. Professor Mrs. Okebukola is my English teacher. Yes, she's my English teacher. We wish her many happy returns of the day. Long life. I'm pros. Parity. Hey, Pepe. Good. So let's get back to class. Yes, welcome back to class. Our statistics made easy class. Our lesson number nine on multivariate analysis of variance. So we call it multivariate analysis of variance. I think it's an American pronunciation with multi. We're looking at a one way model today, May 8th, 2020. And uh, we recall that last lesson. We focused on analysis of covariance when we looked at it, brief history, mathematical model, and all these other things. Oh, a very interesting day to day maneuver, multivariate analysis of variance. I'll be looking at a new formula for a sequence. We are going to look at where to use, how to use, how to interpret, and how to report. It's a word, man. It's a word, word, word. So, what's the short form of this maneuver? Multivariate analysis of variance. What's the short form? It can be this capital, can be with the capital uh, letter at the beginning or lowercase all the way through. I tell you, all of them correct because you can use this in the middle of the sentence, you can use it at the start of the sentence, and you can use it anywhere you want. As we progress, if you find that you want to pause please pause the pause the video come back and listen to it uh, at your convenience oh there's a question coming up okay before we begin can you tell us the difference between independent and dependent variables Whoop. i thought we had learned this but what is wrong in reminding ourselves about dependent and independent variables it's all about dependency dependency relationship Dependency relationship, as you can liken to a baby that is dependent on the mother. When the baby, the baby is dependent on the mother for food, for clothes, for all of that, and when the mother treats her well, you will see the effect on this baby that is dependent on the mother. So, by that analogy, we can come to look at the dependent variable, which we can, which we abbreviate as DV. It's called dependent because it depends on the independent variable. The value of the dependent variable only changes, only changes in re response to the independent variable. As I said, when the mother feeds the baby well, the baby will grow, will keep, will keep growing. So, scores on achievement tests brought about by independent variable like the method of teaching or the, our attitude scores, scores on practical skills, these are variables that are dependent on the an independent variable so that's why they're called dependent variables or dv what about iv iv is not invitational iv is independent variable now independent variables exactly what it sounds like it's a variable that stands alone and is not changed by the other variables you are trying to measure uh, let's take for instance teaching method and uh, you are trying to measure uh, achievement Achievement will not change the teaching method. The teaching method that will be in an action that the achievement test will be will, will be changing. So the independent variable uh, like uh, teaching method, sex, socioeconomic status, nationality, and school location are independent of those dependent variables. The independent variable is the variable the experimenter changes. Or controls and is assured to have a direct effect on the dependent variable. Now, how do you how do you tell the variables apart? Now, if the independent variable is changed, then an effect is seen in the dependent variable. That's one way by which we can tell them apart. Let's take an example. The effect of CTC approach and sex of students or student on achievement in physics. You can see CTC approach and sex are the independent variables. They are independent of achievement. Achievement depends 
on the CTC approach. So you have independent variables, the IV, the CTC approach, and sex. The dependent variable, by the way, singular, DV, is achievement in physics. This looks quite easy, like this one. The achievement is dependent on the method that is being used. Just try to remember this uh, uh, image. Dependent is the child on the on the mother. Oh, a question coming again. Yes, why not? Uh, what is a type one error? Also type two error. I'm actually anxious to answer the first and the second questions because they relate to this manual that we're talking about. Type one error, type two error. So, what is the difference? Uh, let me take you back several years when I was in school, in high school. We used to joke about type 1 error when we say, oh, if somebody lies, oh, say, ah, ah, you have lied now, that's a type 1 error. So these are my colleagues in school, they are great scientists now, and uh, we thank God for keeping us all. Now let's look at this null hypothesis, which says that there is no significant difference between COVID-19 and coronavirus disease. But look at it. Corona virus disease. This COVID is coronavirus disease. So, if you say there's no significant difference, now lie be that, because uh, uh, that, that is true. Because COVID nineteen and coronavirus disease are the same thing. They are the same. So there's no significant difference in truth. So if you say there is a difference between COVID nineteen and coronavirus disease, then that not lie. Uh, so that not hypothesis you don't miss up. So if you say there is a significant difference when there's really no difference, when there's really no difference, you have committed type 1 error. So type 1 error is false alarm, false alarm, and it's also called alpha error. It occurs when the null hypothesis is true, but you have rejected it. Oh, what a pity. Now let's look at another null hypothesis. There's no significant difference between Abuja and Lagos. <laughs> you come to Nigeria, you see, huge difference. Lagos, now bubble, bubble, heavy, traffic, everything. But Abuja is coming up with traffic too. So there's, there's significant difference between Abuja and Lagos. So if somebody says, oh, there's no significant difference, that's also a lie. But in that case, if you say there is no significant difference, when in actual fact there's a significant difference, you have committed what you call the type 2 error. Type 2 error is otherwise known as a beta error. You recall that that of type 1, now alpha, this is the beta error, is the non rejection of a false null hypothesis, also known as a false negative finding or conclusion. Now let's get back to a uh, man over. Man over. Who should use it? Everybody, everybody should use it. A great scientist, medical scientist, social scientist, education people, engineers, researchers in arts, administration, lawyers, everybody. This is for everybody to use. The question is, are the mathematical models different from one discipline to another? No, no, they are the same. Same model. So mathematical model. As we have one way and over with one independent variable, you also have one way maneuver. You also have two way maneuver. You also have three way maneuver. You also have multi-way maneuver. Multi-way would mean four, five, six, whatever. Now let me show you the difference between figuratively now, ANOVA and MANOVA. Look at this man with only one head. We are investigating only one dependent variable, maybe achievement alone. So this one is ANOVA, analysis of variance. We are looking at the variation in this dependent variable in this man. So ANOVA is one dependent variable. But look at this man with two heads. A dependent variable may be achievement, another dependent variable may be attitude. This one is multivariate. When you don't pass one, when it's more than one, then it's multi. So this is multivariate analysis of variance. Maneuver more than one dependent variable. Look at this, there are three dependent variables. So this is also maneuver. This two, maneuver. So one way maneuver is when we take only one dependent variable, as I said before. Now, you have a choice. When you have three dependent variables, like these three, 
you can decide to just do one, eh, do another one on this, hmm. do another on this one separate, do another on this one separate. But you know, you have this man has three heads. It is the same person. You are testing the achievement. You are testing the attitude. You are also testing the practical skills. So separate anovas can lead to type one error. That's why I was happy about that question that you asked. That can lead to your rejecting a true null hypothesis. So as you have noticed, and I'm sure you have noticed, that manova is a classic example of killing two or more birds with a stone. You just do one drop, just you get them to uh, to apply your your statistical statistical test of manova. Two or more dependent variables. So what's the major advantage? Major advantage is that you can use several dependent variables in one single experiment that's killing several birds with a stone. So it gives you a better chance of discovering which factor is truly important. Hey, these police people don't come. Now this is very important. Very important in the sense that if you don't meet these assumptions, you see, MANOVA is very, very sensitive to assumption violation. The, there are several checkpoints. You know, the, it won't allow you. It won't allow you to use it. Even if you, you, even if you use it, you are just going to have very wrong results. So what are these assumptions? You will recall that we have this NHR as our code for ANOVA. Now, this one has two more. You have this N, normality of uh, multivariate normality, homogeneity of variance, independent random as, uh, as sampling, level of measurement. This one is quite straightforward. Assumes that the independent variables are categorical, like a method. And the dependent variables are continuous, getting from zero to whatever, or, or scale variables. And then absence of multicollinearity. I really love this one. You see, when you say achievement, you are measuring achievement, achievement of one person. Attitude, the same person. Practical skills, the same person. The more there's likely to be some interaction, some correlation, some interference. The moment you have the correlation to be above this, some people put it as 0.9, but I think 0.8 is good from the literature. 0.8, that is, the relationship is one that is not perfect. If it's perfect, then there's no basis of conducting the separate, uh, uh, taking them to be different dependent variables. So multicollinearity is important. You have to check that your variables, your dependent variables, are not too correlated to one another. Uh, so there are five stages, five stages. Stage one is for you to check that the assumptions are met. If these assumptions are met, all these other ones are just wasting time. When you have scaled this hurdle, then you conduct the maneuver on the data. Maneuver will not allow you in. The immigration here is tough for immigration. It's like immigration into one of these Western countries. They make it very tough for you. So when you don't pass immigration, then you can now conduct maneuver. After Banova, uh, when you've seen the entire thing, then you can begin to do your univariate F test. And then, if the F test is significant, you now do the postdoc and then report your findings. So, people, hey, wait, oh, are these stages difficult? No, these stages are not difficult, my friend. But let's move on to the mathematical model. And this is when I want you to have half of your eyes closed. Why? Because I'm going to be showing you some fairly scary mathematics statistics. Hey, but not to worry. You're very lucky. While I was in school, those scary mathematics or statistics, we have to learn and write the program, algorithm for the computer to do. But in your case, nothing. You are in an age where the computer does the calculations for you. So let's look at the formula for the global F test. What I mean by global is the multivariate F test. You have the Pile stress, I'll come to this in a minute, Wilkes Lambda, Hotelin stress, and Royce Largest Rule. What has happened is that these people, these are statisticians. I'm looking for the name of an African here, not yet, but we're going to get there. These are statisticians who say, okay, fine, let me now provide a statistic, let me give you the, the calculations that will let you conduct the multivariate F. So Pile came around, oh, showed them, this is my own. Wilkes came around, this is my own. 
Hotelings came around, Royce came around, and they all of them said, Okay, fine, but they're all testing the same thing. So we are going to be selecting from one of them. Hmm. Let's look at Pillay Street. Pillay is a Sri Dharan Pillay, an Indian American. Uh, you can see he was born in 1920, died in 1985, and did so wonderfully for the world of statistics. And you can see this. Uh, uh, the formula of the statistic. Then Samuel S. Wilkes. You can see Samuel S. Wilkes. We are remembering him today. We are going to remember him forever. Just lived for 57 years. He came up with this Wilkes Lambda. Lambda is the 11th letter in the Greek alphabet. In the Greek, yeah, Greek alphabet. So these are this thing. When we do this, we we'll have to write the program that will solve this one. But now, don't worry. I'm sure you have half of your eyes closed. Eh? Keep the other, keep Keep the other eye closed. Hotelings came on. Harold Hotelin. Harold Hotelin. Uh, uh, this, these are some of his uh, data. Lived up to 78 years. And uh, since he got all of got, got this, we will be using it. Lolly Hotelins Chris. These are the formula. Royce Largest Truth, that's this one. Bartlett, I'll be coming to you on Bartlett later. So these are all the four tests. Now, you can open your two eyes or open your two eyes because the form part starts right now. But meantime, if you don't find it convenient, you can pause, come back to this video later. So let me give you a practical example of maneuver. Now, there's a problem in Africa, big problem. The African Union said that African students are not doing well in physics. And that has to be solved. So we want to apply maneuver. And I to, on your behalf, go to the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa. And I met with the heads of state and government and they said, look, what can we do? The problem is this. Students' performance in physics is getting poorer. Now, we need to intervene. If we don't intervene, Africa will be short of critical human resources, such as medical doctors, physics teachers, engineers for development. Oh, terrible thing. As well as performance as seen in achievement, to attitude and practical skills in physics has not improved over the last 10 years. And it has been found that the way we teach our students in physics, teach them physics, has not, is not longer effective. So, we rose to the challenge, we say we're Africa Center of Excellence. Uh, so, we ask the AU to let us give a solution, a shot. So, this is our, in quotes now, letter to the AU, African Union. Your Excellencies will do something about it. We'll conduct a study involving students from Nigeria, Burundi, DRC, and Ghana to see if there will be some improvement. The methods we want to experiment with are the CTC approach and the use of analogies will test their effectiveness with that of the normal or traditional method. So what's the procedure? But well, I have three groups. CTCA group, analogies group, and the lecture. I'm going to teach them a topic in physics, Newton's law, laws of motion. Why? Because find that students find this difficult. It's very calculations. And the particles. Before treatment, we pre-tested the students and post-tested them after treatment on tests to measure achievement, and the attitude, the physics, and practical skills relating to Newton's laws of motion. They were got a global score where we adjusted the pretest scores for all of this. So we had one dependent, one independent variable, that's the method, and three dependent variables. Now let's take a peep at the data that we got. So these are the data that we collected from uh, the students, Nigeria, Burundi, DRC, Ghana, and all of that. Uh, the student specialization degree and all. And then the method. Uh, you can see the method one for CTCA, two for analogies, and then three, the control group that are here. And then uh, our three dependent uh, variables, achievement, attitude, and practical skills. So these are the data that we collected from the field in quotes oh yes yeah. so now we've got our data so let maneuver joyfully begin remember there are five steps 
check the assumptions are met, conduct maneuver on data, and all of this, all of that. So, which statistical tool should we use? Well, for our class, we've settled for IBM SPSS. How do you get it? Your score, you get from your score, or you can purchase online or from any creditable source. We have always emphasized that, and this is very important, that you do not depend on others to analyze your data for you. Uh, they will cook your, cook your results and mess up your integrity. So it's important for you to learn how to do maneuver. These mercenaries will not be there when you are defending your thesis or dissertation. They will not be there when you are submitting an article for presenting and asking you to bring your own data and to just mess you up. So let's go on to step one. Check that assumptions are met. I mentioned to you that this is very important. If you don't go through this immigration, you can't go into the kingdom of Manova. So these are the assumptions. Any child who looked at this before. So let's start with checkpoint number one. Test of normality. So for each of the dependent variables, you know, we had how many? Yeah, that's it. Three. Achievement, attitude, practical skills. For each of them, you've got to test for a normality of the data. What does that mean? You see, they should come, the data should come from a normal population. So the test of normality is to see that the, the data do not deviate much from normal population. You can't get the normal population, surely, but you see, it should be approximate to that. And the way to do it is some people have come again to help us. Shapiro Wilk, Wilkes, Levins, they have come to give us some tools, some statistical tools. Very soon we're going to get some Africans giving us some tools in the future. So the Shapiro Wilkes test should not be significant. It should not be significant because we want the not, not significant means that the data are not significantly different from normal. So that's what we want. The Vince test should also not be significant because it will tell us that if it, if it is not significant, it means that the data are not, static, they are not different from normal. But if it's significant, that's trouble. It means that uh, data are different from normal. Okay? And then uh, all that text, uh, QQ, I was, uh, this, this uh, police, I was quite interested in. Quanta, quanta, uh, plot, these dots on the line, we'll see them in a minute. Histogram should be approximately normal call. Hey, policeman, number one offense. Stop this man, or cut a man at the checkpoint. Number one offense is where was this goat when our DPO celebrated Christmas and New Year without meat? Number two offense is why is the goat not putting on helmet? We are putting on helmet, so let's move. So with our helmet on, let's have the practical. First, we're going to do the theory of practical, which is that when you take go to SPSS, you, you go to descriptive statistics and then you go to explore. Uh, so you can see this descriptive statistics explore. And then you put your dependent variables here, the three of them, achievement, attitude, practical skills, and your method here. And uh, you for your plots, that's this one, for your plots, you take, uh, you can leave some and leave just histogram and the normality plot test. And that, that's it. So let's go on live, 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 live to do this. This now, not be theory again. Live. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, we we'll go to analyze as we showed in the theory of particles. Descriptives. <laughs> yeah, going good. What you should what should I select here? Yeah, you got it. Explore. Explore. Let me reset this. We're exploring the, the three dependent variables. We are checking for normality for the three dependent variables. They are here. So you put in dependent variable list. A factor is uh, our method. Where's method? Where are you? Here. Yes. And then I say statistics, you don't need to bother about the plot. Yes, options, no. Just go to plots. And uh, let's leave out stem and leaf plot. You can take on this two graph. And we want normali no normality plots and tests. Be experimenting with this over time. But let's just settle with this. And then we'll say, okay. So let's see our output. We have our output. It's coming up. Uh, this is a case process summary with the number of cases and all that. 
and then please watch out for this skewness and kurtosis. Kurtosis is the kind of hump that the normal cork has. Skewness you were wearing in an earlier class. Uh, so this is not too bad. Uh, I'll come to all of them, the skewness and the kurtosis. Uh, let's look at this. Test of normality. Shapiro Wilk. Hmm. Now, Shapiro Wilk, if you get any of this to be significant when deep trouble, meaning that we are, our data on achievement, attitude, and practical skills are significantly different from normal. But since this SIG, uh, in SPSS is SIG, but actually if you, it's P, uh, uh, P, the P value, you can see this more than 0.25, more than 0.25, more than 0.25, everything more than 0.25, everything not significant. That means our data are not significantly different from normal. We are very happy. We clap for ourselves. Okay? So let's look at these two grams. You can see these two grams. Normality. We're well, looking at normality. You can see this is look, this looks like normal, doesn't it? But you see, we say approximately normal. So if you interpose the line here, so approximately normal. So these are some of the other side. Now let's look at the QQ plot, the quanta quanta plot of achievement. Now the quanta quanta plot, what you must be looking for. Uh, this, how these dots, these points, how they cling to this line. You can see it's not too bad, not too bad. So, uh, this for achievement. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. The, but uh, I'm, I'm, go I'm going to look for the QQ plus. QQ plus for attitude, you can see. It. This is also not too, too bad. Uh, let's look at the QQ plot for achievement, excuse me, for practical skills. Yeah, this Q, normal QQ plus for practical skills, you can see. No, no. Some deviation, but it's not too bad. Now, don't bother about the the trend depth, normal QQ plus. That's what we have uh, in this uh, situation. Yeah, so that's our life practical. Let's go on to our results, which I just showed you. Uh, I'll be very quick here. I just uh, cropped the data from there to here. So you can see test of normality, all not significant, good results. All the Shapiro will not significant. I have to report that in your thesis. So you can see the QQ plus, as I mentioned, all clinging, attitude, practical skills, all clinging, histogram, not too bad. So test of homogeneity of variance, living statistic. Oh, I, I didn't show you there, but that's what living, the living statistic looks like here. And we'll come back to it anyway. So for achievement, not significant so they are all not significant meaning that our variances are homogeneous for achievement for attitude for practical skills you can see there is nothing that is less than 0.05 everything here more than 0.05 so all not significant these are good results i told you about the skewness and the kurtosis these are okay for achievement and also for the rest of them so for testing the assumptions we have done this, this, this. This one is okay uh, because our variables are uh, the dependent variable. The independent variable is categorical and this one is not continuous. Now let's look at this last one. Multicollinearity. How do we do that? Dependent variables cannot be too correlated with one another. The correlation should not be above 0 0.80. And I'm thinking it should be between 0 0.2 and uh, 0 0.80. So how do you do that? How do you test the absence of multicollinearity? So you have to do correlation. You have to correlate, bivariate, and then uh, you move all your variables that you want to check whether they are correlated, whether achievement and actually whether there's correlation among them, and then the correlation should be between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. Uh, okay, before I show you this, let me just go and run the co uh, correlation. So this is the practical part of that. So no theory here, no theory, just see the thing. So what should I do? Analyze. What else do I move to? Yes, we write correlate, because I want to correlate them. So it's bivariate, correlate, bivariate. That's what I showed you earlier, bivariate. So I already moved. Let me reset and show you clearly. So you move this achievement, attitude, practical skills to here. That's all you need. It's already giving you person. And so that's it. And you say, okay. So this is our table. It shows us that achievement and attitude, 0 0.5. Not bad. Because we are looking for from 0.2 to 0.8. In fact, the less 
the value here the better. So in terms of multiple linearity. Practical skills 0.621. Uh -huh. Attitude, achievement, that's the same thing here. Diagonal and the attitude and practical skills 0.603. Practical skills, this, this. So we are very, very, we are in good shape here of multi collinearity. There's absence of multi collinearity. Yeah, so as you can see, this is a very good result. All R values not more than 0 0.80. No multi collinearity. You can see that. See that. Very good. So what's our verdict? Our verdict on normality check were passed. Distinction self, distinction. So police can't carry this man, carry the phone, carry the phone, man's phone. Prove that it's your wife. I, I think this man told the policeman that the phone is uh, the wife. Prove that it's your wife on this phone. Can I see your marriage certificate? Her college degree? Hey, police. Tax documents, international passport, Dental records and best certificate. That's my own. Oh, we don't pass this normality check. And we are moving on. We are moving on to step two. We have done the check the assumptions. We're good. Conduct maneuver on data to get the global F. So how do we do that? Now, maneuver will get you this multivariate F. That's the global F. And all four multivariate Fs are produced from the, by these four people, by these four statistics. But we have to select one. So which one should you select? Well, Pilestres, if you mess up with one or two assumptions, then you go to Pilestres. But if most of the assumptions are met, you go to Wilkes Lambda, Wilkes, Wilkes Lambda. All these other ones, you can see Lambda as written. Uh, these other ones are also for you to choose. Hey, question again. Yeah, who is asking now? Fred, uh, I think it's Olade Joe. Yeah, okay, Olade Joe. What's the question? What's the difference between multivariate F and univariate F? Yeah. You see, the multivariate F is like umbrella over all the three dependent variables. You are grouping them, putting them together, and running an F all over them. So, achievement, attitude, practical skills, everybody together to get the multivariate F. That F of many variables that's the one that's the first step in the maneuver operation and the second step that is when you are past the immigration you don't enter maneuver house maneuver will first of all catch you and do motivate on top of you and then it will then send you to anova to do univariate f so univariate f for achievement univariate f for attitude univariate f for particle skills that is the second step Oh, we now understand perfectly each time. So I'm I'm happy myself. Thank you. I'm, thank you for thanking me. So as I said, you can come break this video anytime. Later. Come back to it. Hey, this is the time my mouth is watering. My mouth is watering. This is the time when the sweet manuva soup is ready to be eaten. Ah, manuva soup, an officer in case. Uh but officer, my glasses are not tinted. Yeah, this is a woman. My glasses are not tinted. Madam, I cannot see your eyes. And you say your glasses are not tinted. I beg, pack. My friend, we are not packing because we are moving on to the theory of the practical. So, you go to analyze. If you are doing IBM SPSS maneuver, you go to analyze. You go to general linear model. And you know it's multivariate. Multivariate analysis of variance. You come to multi. Of like multi varied and you see contrasts as a selection button there so for contrast you will have to take um, change contrast you take it to simple because you come with none so, uh, change to simple and you have to hit this change button because don't hit the change button it will be the default of none that will get in there so you go to post talk Postdoc, you move method to here, and then you select your postdoc. We have select, we're going to select Shefi because it's conservative, and we don't have equal number of students in the three groups. And then look at options. The options will give us descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity test. The same Levin that I mentioned earlier. So let's go on to life practical. So here we go. It will be analyzed. Yes, then what? Class, what? Yes, you correct general linear model, then what? 
you know, we're talking about multivariate. So it's not uni, it's not multivariate. So which are, are dependent variables? There are three of them. Which three? Achievement. You can hold on your shift key or, or control if you license them next to one another. And they put this one, dependent variables. A fixed factor is a method, of course. Method, vet method. Here we go. And then uh, uh, we're looking at models. That we're looking at contrast. Let's say, no, well, okay, there. Uh, let's see contrast, yes. Yes, contrast. It's giving us none by way of default, and I told you. So you've got to go to simple, simple contrast and ask it to change it. If you don't press this change, you can see it has changed it here. So continue. The plot, uh, we're not plotting nothing. Postdoc. Yes, let's uh, do post off for the method and select Shafi. Yes, we continue. Options. For the options, let's look at here. Maybe also this. And then look for descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity test. Okay. So we say continue. What else? Nothing else. You can be experimenting with all of this. Well, let's go on let's move on let's move on so what do we have here we have some things coming up quite interesting all right it gives us uh, all of this and uh, oh bad news bad news this bot box test of equality of covariance matrices this one should not be significant this value of p or significance should be greater than 0.25 but it's less than it was 0.02 so we're in some little trouble here but let's go on let's see what happens let's see uh, a multivariate test that's the big one the global one so we are looking at method uh there's another table which you'll see at the bottom here we're looking at we want to take pillays because we have violated this one this one we have violated it so let's take pillays for pillays we're having Ah, sorry, that, that's uh, intercept. We're taking this one here. As you will notice, almost they, they all have almost the same, almost the same p-value significance level. 0 0.0037, 0 0.040, 0 0.243, 0 0.037. But we're taking Pillay's trace, which shows that, which shows that what? This is less than 0.25. So this one is significant. We have a significant overall F. Levin's test, you can see, is coming back again this is significant this is not significant which is quite good for us quite good for us so we go on to test of between means yeah but let, let's go on to here uh let's see contrast yeah this is the multivariate one the one we saw before 0.037 that's the police police uh weeks lambda hotel and largest root royce of royce so this is the univariate you know we after doing the multivariate will not do the univariate. So the univariate is telling us that's this one for achievement. Achievement. The question is: Is there any significant difference in the achievement of students taught using those three methods? Achievement is telling us. Look at it. Oh, no significant difference oh, because this is greater than 0.05. So this is not good. Well, it's not that it's not good. That's what we found. So attitude, let's check attitude. Attitude point oh six eight oh. This is also not significant. Practical skills, oh yeah, this is 0 0.04. 0 0.04 is less than 0 0.05, so this is significant. So in all of this, we only have practical skills that is significant. But we have an overall F on Pillay's trace to be significant. But on the univariate, only the practical skills. The next thing to ask, where is that significant difference happening? What is causing it to happen? That will take us to postdoc. So postdoc, here we go. Postdoc here, Shefi, that we've selected. So we'll look at practical skills. Let's look at the one, just check for the ones that is significant. So it's here. Uh, it is this, yes, 0 0.048. That is the CTCA and lecture method. So when you compare CTC or lecture method, CTC has a higher mean than, uh, than uh, see this difference in the mean. It's higher than the lecture method. And that is what is causing the significance. That looks quite interesting. So let's go back 
to our further analysis. Yeah, so life practical, yeah, it's over. So on our, our one-way Manukova results, I mentioned this before, Box and test. Box, this man, Judge Box, Judge Box. <laughs> Unfortunately, we failed you today. We failed for your box test. Now, this is named after George E. P. Box, who first discussed the test in 1949. Got his PhD from Pearson. That's the man. Good man. Good, good. That's a good laugh. Now, uh, the Markova result number two discrete statistics. You have all of them here. Discrete statistics, the mean for CTCA on achievement and all of that. And this is the end. So we had 18 people for CTCA, 12 for analogies, and 8 for the lecture method. The Vince test, good result. We didn't do well in it. As I showed you in the practical life demonstration. So the multivariate test, that's the overall F. We can see Pilate's traced 0.37. I'm going to mention this partial ether to you. Is the contribution of uh, the depend is the contribution of the method to this dependent variable? What you normally should do is to move this decimal point two places to the right. So you say 13.9% is what the method is causing to change in achievement test. What does that mean? In, in the overall, in the overall. That is is just 13.9%, less than less than less than 14% contribution, meaning that there's a lot to be accounted for in the change in performance. So as I, as we have here. Partial eta square, this is how you write eta eta square, shows how much variance is explained by the independent variable. It is used as the effect size for the MANOVA model. So we have done step one, assumptions gone. We have done step two, MANOVA gone. We have done step three, F for each dependent variable. Step, yeah, we've done this, yes. Uh, step four is the post talk. I've showed you post talk, so this is the post talk. And I also showed you before, so this is it. This is where the thing is causing the thing, the causing the significant difference to happen within practical skills. So I've done one, two, three, put a four. We are now in five. How do you report your findings? We're about to break the man over chain. So our research question is this: Will there be any statistically significant difference in achievement, in attitude to our practical skills of physics students? African physics students. Thought using the CTC approach, analogies, and lecture. Remember, we had one independent variable and three dependent variables. So apparently, apparently, we had three null hypotheses in here. There will be no statistically significant difference in A, achievement, that could be HO1A, attitude, 1B, and practical skills of physics students taught using these approaches. So what's our decision? Look at this very carefully. Although multivariate F, this is how you report it, Pillay's trace was significant. F is equal to 2.36, P is equal to 0.04. You notice that I've changed. You know, before I would say P less than 0.05, you can do that also. So P is equal to 0.04. All I did was to report uh, the exact values that I got in there. Univariate ANOVA's achievement, F, these are degrees of freedom between and within, is equal to 2.37. P is equal to 0.11. As I said, you can see P is equal is greater than 0.25. You can still put it like that. Both are accepted or acceptable. And attitudes, F245 is equal to 2.85. P is equal to 0 0.07. Failed to attain statistical significance. However, statistically significant difference was found for practical skills. F this is equal to 3.35. P is equal to 0.04. Decision HO1A and HO1B are not rejected. HO1C is rejected. Oh, so we should be ready today to send a report Report to African Union. African Union. You can see how quick we can get. Report of the study on investigation of methods of improving achievement, attitude, and practical skills of African students in physics submitted to the African Union today, May the 8th, 2020. 
oh my people there's a word of caution you see the data for this study were uh, for demonstration only for demonstration only as they were randomly generated by students in the ac811 911 class of course we can go to the field and collect the same data run this experiment as we have described it secondly you need at least 30 students per group for valid decision making we only had 18 12 18 that is not enough we had maximum of 18 in this demonstration study so that's the word of caution to sum up in this lesson we learn how to conduct a report the one way maneuver next lesson we shall be going to another very exciting very exciting statistic that's the sister of maneuver is a multivariate analysis of covariance man -covariant. so um all the very best all the absolute best to you all live long and prosper best of luck in your studies and your endeavors uh, from me is bye for now this is my email id if you want to make contact with me god bless you all see you next class